Companies have always known how to face all sorts of challenges, whether that means reducing costs, changing business line, or adapting to new client needs. However, with the rise of technology, the pace of change has increased drastically. Today, I'm welcoming Sharada Mohanty from AI Crowd, a company that helps businesses making the most of technology and use it differently. Mohanty, welcome, and thank you so much for being with us. Um, as we all know, AI and machine learning are quite a big thing right now, right? Uh, how would you describe and maybe explain the current situation? First of all, happy to be here. Um, artificial intelligence and machine learning, they have been around for decades. Mm -hmm. The key ideas and people have been exploring and coming up with uh, many cases, uh, astonishing results like in late 90s, early 60s. But none of those results were something where you could actually use it at scale to solve problems that we humans could be. Sometime around 2012 and 13, the whole community had that aha moment where we managed to train these models to solve a bunch of complex tasks. Like can you look at an image and predict what thing is in the, there? Or can you analyze millions of record, uh, records to come up with uh, an intelligent behavior in terms of how you make decisions? Since 2012, 13, much of the community of researchers who had been struggling to find just the right ideas, who had been struggling to stumble upon the right ideas which could work in practice, we have been working on figuring out how to build tools that can actually be used by organizations. And talking about those possibilities, is there any potential and even the feasibility to apply this technology, for instance, to the, the industry of banking or finance? So first I would clarify that I am not an expert in uh, you know the way technology is used in uh, banking but I still have a um, decent understanding from a researcher's point of view of how the banking and finance industry has been using uh, some, uh, much of the research that we do. One thing it's important to note in context of adoption of technology there has always been a latency in context of uh, the banking uh, sector although in some cases they did really well like ATMs and also uh, adoption of online banking and whatnot. But when it comes to adoption of AI as a tool there's still a huge gap that needs to be filled. And there's also his probably historical reasons why. Uh, sometime around uh, late 90s, early 2000, this notion of algorithmic uh, trading was this uh, big thing that everyone was jumping on. And uh, even right now, majority of the actual uh, trading volume is via algorithmic trading. But in algorithmic trading, uh, all that focus, in, uh, focus of energy in algorithmic trading does not always kind of bring in a lot of return in general and also the amount of investment you put in there you do not uh, have a good understanding of the amount of returns that you could get in there. But in, and in algorithmic trading you are always trying to predict the future of some sorts and how well you kind of do that uh, brings uh, the most value. But a personal thought would be a much better bet would be in this notion of personalization. Many of these huge companies that you uh, interact with right now, which kind of grew up during the dot-com bubble and matured after that, they relied on this idea of personalization at scale. And they figured out how to kind of do that using technology, AI, modeling, and a, a whole lot of other such things. In context of banking, there is a huge gap that can be filled. The question is, you, many people, they use Netflix as a service just because it can provide you personalized recommendations of what um, the movies uh, you um, would watch and in many cases they are also correct which is uh, really cool to begin with. In context of banking that level of personalization is a key opportunity that people need to kind of jump on and the thing is there in contrast to algorithmic trading you won't have to go and predict the future. Your job is to in that case maximize the value of the present in that case. You have these users, how do I deliver a service in which case these users just want to come and use these services because they have been personalized just for them. And again and again and again. Yeah, we have the tools, we have the know-how and we have the use cases and case studies of how other organizations actually did that in context of different products. So someone needs to kind of figure, it out, figure out the broad verticals in the banking industry where you can uh, use it. And is this someone new? I mean, your company, AI Crowd, is a platform that helps companies to help to, to basically use technology to their best. Uh, how would you explain what you're doing properly? Uh, I, I hope uh, we uh, play a part in that. Um, but the way I like to see AI Crowd, it's, it was a passion project that I started during my PhD. And 
the way AI crowd uh, has been growing, I like to see it as like an enabler for um, many organizations. Only a handful of organizations have perfected the art of how to optimally use technologies like AI and whatnot, and they are reaping the benefits. There's many other organizations who do not have a lot of clarity on how exactly do we use this AI to bring immediate value. The traditional approach is you invest in a large research team in-house, and if you're a small um, organization, you probably will only have a few researchers that you will try with. Fantastic. So the communities within AA Crowd, they work through some sorts of challenges, right? Yes. At the minute, you're working for the Imperial College of London for the insurance sector, working on improving the pricing model of insurance. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to translate uh, the way you're working at the minute on that to, for instance, the, the, the finance or the banking industry? Mm -hmm. So, just to elaborate on that particular example, right, where uh, that's actually a research project from Imperial uh, College um, uh, London, where these researchers wanted to ask this question, what is the most optimal way to kind of decide what is the price of um, an insurance that you are providing? Mm -hmm. So, the one approach to do that is you already have some AI approaches in, um, in which you uh, kind of uh, look at a particular uh, insurance uh, offering and then come up with a particular price or a bunch of senior executives and their product team sit down together and come up with the optimal uh, price based on their intuitions. And all of them, they work in industry. But they said, can we imagine a model where we kind of create this interesting uh, data set which is a historical data set of actual um, insurance uh, offerings and their uh, prices. And what we do is we put it up as a challenge on AI Crowd. Now, thousands of these um, um, researchers on AI Crowd, they come in together to submit their AI models, which would look at one of these insurance and make a bid. And what we do is we take their models and we ensure there's a huge tournament of sorts, a bidding war of sorts between all the models that we receive. What is the future of this technology? Now in the banking industry, if you can identify a, a, just a small verticals of um, uh, avenues where we can uh, use personalization and at scale, these would be problems where I would really love to kind of engage the AI crowd community to come and uh, solve. Because again, if you go, if your bank is kind of offering you something or anything and that is something that is completely decided uh, based on, um, uh, you know, your age demographics or where you are based. Uh, that's one approach to do that and almost everyone in your location is demographic see the same thing or based on your interactions with your uh, online bank account or uh, your transactions your bank basically tailors the offer it makes just for you. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, if you have a great offer your uh, someone you know your friend cannot just get the same offer but this offer has been optimized to kind of cater just to you, to be valuable for you so that you will engage with it. These are some things that uh, I'm pretty sure have to happen soon. And uh, here uh, the rule book and the playbook is already there from how many other organizations uh, like Netflix and others have mastered the art of personalized uh, recommendation. And someone in the banking industry needs to kind of catch up. So it would be fantastic actually to have more personalization within that business for sure. But mm -hmm. who do you think would be the, 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 the most important players on that field for the future? The most important players in that case would be a bunch of these, um, these senior executives in these major banks who need to prioritize that this notion of using these playbooks of uh, personalizations, growth hackings and enabling, mm -hmm. uh, you know, optimizing uh, this um, uh, notion of value that is provided to each single uh, customer is kind of uh, maximized. So someone uh, at uh, some of these executives have to kind of prioritize this notion that some effort and uh, energy has to go into this exploration and um, exp exploration to kind of find some ideas and then also some energy has to go into to take these ideas and experiment with them so that you basically tune these ideas into a product, this notion of an AI product or a technological product which brings you immediate value on its scale. Mohanty, thank you so much. It was really a pleasure to know more about AI crowd, machine learning and AI in general. Uh, we are really, really convinced that we'll hear more about AI crowd in the future. So all the best uh, for you and for the company. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, we hope you, you learned something new with us today. And if you want to know more about AI, stay tuned. Speak soon.